<laughs> hey, this is what's wild in the head for this morning. I'm up at Turtle Town Pond with uh, Matt. Matt, who you got here with you this morning? Matt, uh, Matt Carpenter from Fishing Game. Yeah, we're these are the eel boys, the eel boys this morning. We're going to see what's happening here. All right, Matt, give us uh, who you got and what are you up right, to? I got Ed. He's a fisheries biologist. I fisheries. Nice, Ed. Motika. I got Doug Smithwood. Smithwood from. Yeah, fish and wildlife. Hey, Fish and Wildlife Service, and they're going to check the eel trap here. Matt, go ahead t and tell us a little bit about why why you get an eel trap here, and okay. what have you found this year? Um, actually, uh, it, it all started with Doug years ago. We started trapping eels up at Lake Point Dam in Winnipesaukee uh -huh. to learn more about when they move, you know, their numbers, how big they are, and just get information that helps us make recommendations hydropower owners to try to prevent them from getting killed in the hydropower turf. Nice. So this is, uh, this is one of the traps that come from that effort. And um, this is Turtle Town Pond. And we've set up a trap here at the outlet of the dam. And we've got it set up so that all the eels that are migrating to the ocean spawn. And when they, when they get mature, they have one chance to migrate from fresh water up to the ocean and the Sargasso Sea to spawn. How old are these eels? They could be anywhere from 10 to 20, you know, even up to sometimes 30 years. But in here, it could, I, I would imagine they're probably between 10 and 20 years old. Okay. So they've been in Turtle Town Pond yeah. for probably likely 10 to 20 years. And they migrate up as little, small elvers, or, and then they, as juveniles, they're actually able to climb... Um, dams, as long as they're wet, they can actually climb up surfaces and get into ponds like this. And I have watched that. It's exactly. unbelievable to see. So this is actually, they have to get past uh, five dams to get here. To get here. Basically. Wow. And they all have some And these are dams dam. like Lawrence and Lowell and yeah, big dams, Amoskeg, yeah. big dams. Wow. Some of them have fish passage. We've been working with them to try to improve, especially Doug's been one of the big, you know, the big pioneers in terms of uh, improving upstream the eel passage. Nice. And, uh, All right, Doug. <laughs> Thumbs up to Doug. <laughs> that's improved the numbers a lot. And we're hoping we see an increase in eel numbers in the upper water today. And that's one of the things we're doing here is trying to get a baseline for what's here now. Okay. And hopefully we can improve it over time. Good. So this trap so far has caught five eels this year. Wow. Which is, Compared to last yeah, year. It's a small pond and I didn't really know what to expect. Last year we only caught one. We, it also looked like the high summer flows. We think they might have left early last okay. year. Okay, all right. But this year, I think we're catching pretty much all the yields that are trying to leave the pond. Okay. The water was low all summer, and they really couldn't get out. Right, so right. There's also the beaver. And you can see here, the beaver is a real problem when you're, when you're trying to set these traps because they constantly pile their, their you know, all the debris onto the trap and the mud. And so we set up a, a fence there, and there's a, actually a pipe through there that the beaver won't clog. So the eel will actually come into the pipe and make it onto the ramp and it prevents all the you know all the leaves and all the sticks and everything from, from getting onto the trap. And the way the trap works is the water falls through those holes in the ramp and the eel just keeps going and slides into that cage down there. Well, you're gonna check that cage I take it. Yeah. So it's important that those holes don't get clogged or else all the water will flow into the, uh, the trap and it can overflow. And it's been working. <laughs> and it's been working. All so right. We're, we're gonna jump down it's going to be noisy. We probably won't be able to hear him very well, but he's going to go take a look and see if there's any eels today. <laughs> all right. We're looking for eels. Yeah. Now, if you've never grabbed an eel before, it is an experience. <laughs> no eels. <laughs> well, eels are what my granddaughter would call a slippity, a new word that she coined years ago when she was catching trout. Oh. Hey, we got a frog. All right. One frog release. So these hoses are what, these hoses keep the trap full of water. So when the eel goes in there, it has Stay alive. Okay. 
they can live out of water for a period of time as long as it's moist, right? They can live out of water for a period of time as long yeah. as they got as long as it's moist. But not too long. Not too long, yeah. They are fish. Awesome. Well that would have been exciting. Eels. You just keep the ramp clean. Yeah. There's something exciting about an eel. I mean, eels and bats are kind of my two favorite animals, and uh, probably not everybody's, but I do like eels and bats and things that are different. Their life cycle is so interesting. Matt, tell us a little bit more about the life cycle of the American eel. Ed will tell you. Uh, Ed will tell me. Ed, tell us a little bit more about the life cycle well, of American eels. Yeah, like Matt said, they, they come in in the spring as elders, spring and summer, real small. Now the female have migrated down to the Sargasso Sea to spawn. Yep. Spawn and die. Yep. yep, they spawn in the ocean, they die down the Sargasso Sea. So the juveniles come up in the spring and summer. And How long does it take them to hatch and say make it back to New Hampshire? Any idea? Oh geez, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How does anybody know? How long it takes when, when do they hatch? I think that they first find them spawning their platonic uh, you know, first so they migrate out now in the fall, spawn and probably have they're probably hatching by February. And the Sargosso Sea is off uh, Bermuda, kind of? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's 1,200 miles to the, the mouth of the Merrimack, roughly, maybe 1,400. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they go on the current. Yeah. They're, they're just floating on it, and they're almost transparent. Um, our project leader used to call them, they look like whale stock. They're floating <laughs> in the ocean, but uh, huh. and then they will form into elvers. Are clear. You can see right through them. Yeah, you glass can see eels. See their whole uh, intestinal tract in there. And when they first come in the ocean, they're, they're transparent. Yeah. So, then they show up in the spring, May, uh, to our rivers here to as uh, juvenile eels, about what inch and a half, two inches long, to migrate up in the freshwater. Yeah, we start getting them in the very early spring. Yeah. Uh, especially if you are trapping them, you know, low in the water. Today. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Nice. Then they uh, get up to dams and live uh, 10 to 20 years <laughs> here in the Turtle Town Pond. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> There's some eel habitat right there. And uh, hey, no eels today, but a successful season by the crew here down there. We got Matt and, and Doug and all right. And Good, and Ed, yep. And the season may not be over yet. The so. season may not be over. All right, looking for more eels here at Turtle Town Pond. Grand day. <laughs> No eels today, but we're still looking. Thanks, Matt and crew. This is wildlife biologist Eric Orff for what's wild in the him.